Hi, everyone. Oops. Hi, everyone. So as promised, um, as things unfold, I want to give you a quick update when there is major news on the unfolding banking crisis. So the first thing I want to say is there's a teach-in that is pinned to my page. You should watch that one first to give you context. This is the second teach-in um, that we're following up on what happened starting on Friday with two banks that had gone under Silvergate Capital that I mentioned was tied to crypto and Silicon Valley Bank, uh, which was a more troublesome one, which was tied to venture capital, because in that case, uh, roughly 93% of its deposits were over 250,000. So that was above what was insure, assured. So what happened tonight, what happens at six o'clock every Sunday night is the stock market doesn't open per se, but the futures open. So the Fed wants to assure people before trading starts. And so there was an announcement this evening. Um, three things have happened since we spoke last. Again, watch the first teach-in for context, but three major things have happened. Number one, the Fed has closed down another bank, Signature Bank in New York. It's a small bank. Its business is in the crypto business. That's what they do, crypto banking. So another cryptocurrency bank uh, has failed. Um, they are a small bank, uh, but they are the third bank. We now have a total of three. But again, I just want to reiterate that these are banks that cater to specific sectors. This is not a broad-based problem because of one of the things we're about to discuss, the Fed is addressing. Uh, but but these three are, are very much uh, impacted by sp specific businesses, cryptocurrency, venture capital. Okay, so a third bank, small bank. The second thing the that the Fed came out with tonight, and this is done uh, in conjunction Sorry, Shep is drinking water in the background on cue. Uh, this is in conjunction with the Federal Reserve, which is Jerome Paul, the FDIC, and the Treasury Secretary, Janet Yellen. Um, what they have done tonight is said that they will back all deposits at both Signature as well as Silicon Valley Bank. For Silvergate, that was not an issue. But for these two other banks where it was an issue, they will back deposits. The, bank, the FDIC has taken control of both of those banks. They will undergo one of two things, either a sale or an orderly liquidation, both of those banks. But while that is happening, and this is big news because I know this impacts a lot of you, as of tomorrow, Monday, you will be able to withdraw your money from those two banks, not from them, but from the FDIC. If you are uh, a vendor with Etsy, for example, or you are an employee of one of the venture capital companies whose payroll was tied up, uh, as of tomorrow, that money will be made available by the FDIC for them to withdraw. So that is big news and it's stable news. Uh, they will not be using taxpayer funds. There is, as I mentioned in, in some of my posts, the banks pay into sort of a fund, um, that they, they pay into a sort of a bank fund for a rainy day like this. Uh, and so that kind of money will be backstopping this. This will not be taxpayer money, as far as we know. That's what we're being told tonight. So the FDIC will make that money available. The FDIC with silver, with, um, ugh, I'm silver sort of, with SVB, with, Cigna, with um, SVB is in process of trying to sell that bank. Um, Silicon Valley Bank. They are trying to sell to another bank. That is their best case scenario, that another bank will buy it in whole. If that does not happen and that those bids are supposedly due tonight, uh, no one has come forward yet to buy it as far as the news reporting yet. But if that does not happen, uh, then there will be a liquidation of SVP's assets over time the, by the FDIC. Now, this is all topic for another day, but it's unclear to me if those asset sales do not meet what the Fed is giving out tomorrow to everyone who had deposits there, who 
bears the burden, but it appears it's not taxpayers. That's what we're being told. Okay, so that's the second major development. The third major development has to do with what is causing this. And we discussed this in the first episode. Remember I talked about uh, interest rates going up and its impact on the banks? Okay, we're, we'll go through that again, but let me first tell you what the Fed is doing tonight to address this. They are making uh, money available to all banks in the banking system, basically a one-year note or one-year borrow uh, in exchange for that collateral. So let me explain that a little bit better. The problem was, and this started with SVB, and you can watch again in the first teach-in, this was precipitated by interest rates going up. And I'll just talk about this one more time. Safe a bank, SVB, in November had purchased treasury bonds. And treasury bonds are AAA, they're safe. They're gonna be worth 100 cents on the dollar. That's our government's debt. But say they had purchased them at 4%. Okay, it's safe. That's what banks do. They got their deposits and they're putting them back out the door and buying treasuries. That's what, you know, what banks do, that's normal. What's not normal or what has precipitated this, this part of the crisis uh, is the, the treasury bonds that were paying 4% in November. Here we are in March, and I'm, these aren't actual numbers, I'm just using them to, to explain. In March, the same treasury bonds, if you were to issue them, would be, say, paying 6%. So if you hold bonds that are only paying 4%, they're not worth as much as the new bond paying 6%. So what the banks effectively had to do is mark all of those down. In my example I just used, if you had bought a bond, a treasury bond, in November that paid 4%, on your balance sheet, it's not marked at par. It's not marked at 100 cents on the dollar. It's marked at 98 cents. So say you bought 100 million in November of treasury bonds that pay 4%. On your balance sheet, even though it's a safe bond worth par, it's not marked at 100 million. It's marked at, again, just using numbers to illustrate, 98 million. So you're showing a loss on your balance sheet. Because some of the banks had done this to such an extent and they didn't have enough cash on hand when they had withdrawals, um, that is what precipitated what was going to be a downgrade. I talked again about this more fully in the first episode. The big banks, again, this does not impact because of two reasons. One, they're huge banks, they're more diversified, and you know if they if they get withdrawals they they don't need to liquidate these treasuries so they can just sort of let them run off over the two years and get back to a hundred cents on the dollar the smaller and middle-sized banks and and some of there's some talk about this not to be too esoteric but dodd frank said capital standards so we wouldn't have this kind of thing happen again <laughs> Not working, because what happened in 2017, um, you know, and I hate to pin blame, but under Trump and when the Republicans controlled the House and the Senate, they pared back Dodd-Frank. And so you've heard me talk about tier one banks. The tier one banks still have to keep cap very well capitalized, but medium sized bank and small banks, which all three banks that have failed fit that bill, do not have to hold as much capital. And that's what happened here. Um, so again, the big banks have to hold so much capital that if they have a lot of people withdraw, they still don't have to sell these bonds down that are, are trading at 98 cents. They don't have to liquidate them. They can let them pay out to par. The smaller banks had to, and that created a loss. And that was part of the reason. Again, there's other issues with these banks, crypto, venture capital, ecosystem, those were other issues. Uh, but for other small banks, this will still be an issue. So what the Fed is essentially doing, say it's another bank like Key Corp Bank, which is another small bank that is not in the same problem because they're not in these industries, but it's a, it's a bank that traded their stock traded down on the same concerns. Say Key Corp had bought in November these 4% bonds that we talked about, 100 million of those and they had to mark them down to 98 cents on the dollar. 
what the Fed is doing tonight is they are saying, we will give you a hundred cents on the dollar. We will give you a hundred million. We will lend that to you, Key Corp. And as you can pledge your bonds that pay 4% as collateral, even though on your balance sheet, they're marked at 98 million because you had to take a write down, we will give you a hundred million. And all you have to do is give us these bonds that are worth par, but that you had marked at 98 cents. So that help will help these small to middle sized banks meet this gap that they they have in, in this unusual time. So um, with that, I'll, I'll take a couple of questions. And um, yeah, how could SVP have avoided this? Uh, I went into this a little more extensively in the first teaching, but it was really bad management. I mean, the bank has problems beyond what I just talked about with interest rates. Uh, they made a lot of risky investments in venture capital, some in venture debt, but some in, in venture equity. Then that's why I'm not so sure they're going to get back par that they're paying out for deposits. But um, when they first were told that they were going to be downgraded by Moody's, the head of the bank flew out, apparently sold stock yet, we don't know that for sure, but he flew out to New York and met with Goldman, came up with a plan to raise more capital to avoid what happened. But before they had publicly finished raising the capital, the cat got out of the bag that they were raising capital. And that caused concern about what was happening at the bank. The stock traded down Wednesday by Thursday morning. Uh, there, there were problems with depositors getting their money out. And people tried at that point, there was a run on the bank. So it was in part bad management and that could have been avoided. Will this come from taxpayer money? No, none of this is what we are being told. None of this is coming from taxpayer money. Uh, the FDIC and the Federal Reserve, all of these operations are being carried out through that. We are told that uh, the money that the FDIC is using for this, I believe, is coming from a bank fund that all the banks pay into to kind of insure one another. Will this affect small minority banks? Um, if they, again, if they are specifically lending towards crypto or venture capital or any sector that is having underlying problems, potentially. But again, this number three that I talked about with the Fed making uh, these funds available to sort of counter the rising interest rates will be available, especially to small banks. This is, this is really a, a liquidity fund for, for small to middle-sized banks. So they can say, oh, we have these you know, government bonds that are trading at 98 cents on the dollar. The government's gonna give me par for those. So that will help a lot. How much of this do you think is going to end up being politicized instead of being dealt with intelligently? Um, you know, I, 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 I don't think it's going to be politicized because I, I think it's really become an issue um, because the government is not getting involved. Taxpayers are not getting involved. This was really the FDIC, Federal Reserve and the Treasury. Uh, the Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Paul was not even, a, he's kept on by Biden, but he was appointed by a Republican. Those should not be um, political, politicized roles, nor should Janet Yellen at, at Treasury, even though she's appointed by Biden. These are just, Janet's very smart. I, you know, I, 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 don't, I don't see this as getting politicized. I, I, I think people, you know, unlike 2008, which was in my mind not handled particularly well, uh, this was a smart move tonight. Um, will the money actually get to where it is needed and not be siphoned off by crooks like PPE? Yes, because in order to um, borrow this money, well, there's two ways the money's flowing out. Number two, number two, remember we talked number thing, first thing was Signature Bank was going out of business. Number two was if you had deposits at Signature or SVP, as of tomorrow, you can get withdraw those from the FDIC. Um, so the FDIC, uh, I, I know of a person that worked for SVP that now is at, at the FDIC. They're, they get the employees basically working. So they'll have all their data. If you had a million dollars at SVB, they will have that data and you will be able to withdraw that. Uh, as far as the, as, as the uh, Fed lending banks money, you have to have collateral pledged in order to get that money. So there, there won't be any of this funny business. 
What's the chances of this being like 2008? No, and I, I, I don't think this is a, a 2008 issue. That was specific to mortgage securities, mortgage-backed securities. That was throughout the whole financial system. Um, totally separate. I do believe we are going into a recession, but it's not going to be. In that particular recession, it was all about the banks and really stupid you know, bank and other financial institutions, stupid lending. And so they suffered the brunt of it. Um, you know, if we have a recession starting now or if we're in a recession, it will be because of other factors. Uh, likelihood of Dodd-Frank's being reinstalled to where it was pre-Trump. Uh, probably not with Republicans holding the House. Um, and I just want to make one other comment because I see someone who was, who was critical about me with the tier one banks. I, I, I just want to reiterate this. Every bank, no matter what bank, small, large, um, community banks, thrift banks, as a consumer, you are protected up to 250000 So you, if you have 750000 you can put it in three different banks and you'll be okay. You don't have to go to the top tier banks. I was just suggesting they are the safest because they are the well, most ca well capitalized if you had an excess of 250000 I just want to say, if you're holding that much cash in the bank, you really shouldn't be holding that much cash in the bank. You can literally go to the treasury website and buy treasury bonds that will pay you over 5%. Or you can go to a Fidelity or a T. Rowe Price. They have funds. They make it super easy to buy treasuries that pay 5%. Um, the banks will not pay you that if you're keeping money with them. So. Um, just, that's just sort of a side note, advice you didn't ask for. Um, yeah, the Fed is bailing them out. Yeah, in, in a sense, the Fed has triggers if they feel that SVP could cause systemic risk to the entire financial world sector, then they have tools they can use, which they use tonight. And I think smart tools because you can start to see how it was reverberating. A lot of you commented, we had several people who were vendors with Etsy and Etsy wasn't able to get their money out. So people from that side of the world, you know, just regular folk who were selling on Etsy were not going to get that paycheck they counted on every month. Uh, people that worked for companies out West that SVP had their payroll money were not going to get it. You could have seen how it was going to mushroom. So the Fed is taking steps to stabilize our banking system. Will we see better regulations to stop this from happening? I, I, with our dysfunctional Congress, I highly doubt it. Um, let me just see if there's any other questions. Um, if you have any other questions, write them at the bottom. Uh, otherwise, what we'll do is as new things come up, um, and there, there definitely will be new things coming up this week as the stock market reopens tomorrow. Would my local credit union be affected? Again, the credit unions are not governed by the FDIC. They have a separate version of the FDIC, but up to $250,000, this is the message for you. You are safe. Uh, if you have $251,000 when you wake up tomorrow, you might as well move 1000 and put it in another bank. Uh, hello from North Fork. Hi. Okay, folks. So we're calling it a night. We'll, we'll keep you posted if anything new happens um, in the coming days, as new things happen in the coming days. Have a good night.